we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, by the mystery of God, may our hearts be enlightened. May we realize correctly to become a man. With these blessings, may our descendants a thousand generations receive blessings. May we be patriots to our country and may we be ambassadors of Christ for world peace. At this time, we believe we will receive miraculous answers. In Jesus' name we thank you and bless. Amen. So, you're suffering in various ways and God knows this so well. If you're not doing well, if you don't even know how to, re to solve these problems, why go to church? That's a fake church. A pastor has to be able to say, look at this pastor, look how, how I get these solutions. So that is a witness who can speak sermons. Even if you have a phone number, it doesn't matter how many phones you have, if you don't have a phone number, so the Bible all has an address if you don't even know the chapter and the verse and you call that a sermon, it is it is so sad. If you don't have an address, you can't send a letter. So it's not that type of sermon. So it's because of my problems. And we don't know what disasters are coming our way. But the problems that we have, we want them to change to blessings. We want miraculous answers. So God, who says he'll help us, he says, I'm almighty. So today, let's get a correct diagnosis. Don't just say amen. You need to see what your Christian life is like. This word is living and working. It's Almighty God, John chapter 1, verse 1. Why are you going to places that don't work? So if you've come here, then you need to do the things to do well. If you're a demon that can't even say amen, not only are you killing yourself, but you kill your descendants, that person cannot be a patriot. And yet that's what you do and you seek freedom of religion and you go to these fake churches. Isn't this so um, pitiful? So, if your problems aren't going to be solved, starting from me, why come here? I'm crazy then. No, it's because he's almighty. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. He can make what is dead to be alive. He can make what isn't to be. But why are you sitting there like a demon? Do you think God, he'll be deceived? Psalms 139 verse 1 to 5. He knows your heart. Those people not doing well. Their ancestors were filthy and they too are filthy. So their ancestors were bad fruits. How can a bad fruit give profit to anyone? If anyone bites into it, their faces get all um, crinkled up. So they're like that. Their ancestors are like that and they're like that. So the, their children aren't even people. And... They're disobedient, and yet we're sitting here brazen. Don't you want to fix this? Don't you want to change it to blessings? 
then you need to repent so that you're able to say Amen. Let's go inside of Christ. So, God created all of creation and He also created me. Let's find Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. So we need to have a correct diagnosis. So how do you live? You know, you're so crazy about a little bit of money or fame. And then you say that you're not crazy. No, you are crazy. If God says you're crazy, then you're crazy. So if you become someone who isn't crazy, that's when you receive blessings. That's when you receive answers to your desires. That's when your children do well. That's why we're here. You know, some, some you know, quack doctor who just says, yeah, yeah, you'll get fixed. No, we have to have a correct di diagnosis according to God's word. So he's created all of the earth and then he created us. Why didn't he create us first? So that we don't have to suffer. So we all we have to do is spend what he gives us. But why is it that you're suffering? And why are you worrying and being anxious? And what you do is you you hang out with those who are to be ruined and you gossip with demons and meddle. And you don't take the blessings in front of you. Why are you like that? You know, there's a mountain of blessings in front of you. If you can't take that, you'll go to hell. If you can get the blessings, then you'll go to heaven. So even if you spent the whole night... You know, if someone's falling asleep here, if you can't say Amen, you need to say to that person, We need to live. Do we have to live or do we have to kill ourselves and our children? Those people who are cursed, they're crazy about money. They love money. They love the world. They eat up their children. So they do that and yet they pretend they're not. That's a beast that perishes. That's God's word. So God created all of the earth and after making us, how did he, what relationship did he make us with? Let's read verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Amen. So after he created everything, before he created us, he, he made us according to his image, which is forced at repentance. So then, money, fame, power, everything in this world, what did he say we have to do? So because you only memorize this, that's why you're someone who kills themselves. You're crazy. So we have to rule over with our hearts, not memorize this. Because you're memorizing with your head, because you can't rule over with your heart, that's why you have these problems. So this is this is the fundamental thing of, of creation. This is number one. So if you go to church without knowing the mystery of God, these fakes, they say that they know the Bible, that they, they've studied the Bible, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9. He says, you're a broken piece of pottery. How can you research your your creator who made you? It's when you repent by forced at repentance and you can only know by grace. You cannot know by researching. But demons, they say that they know by study. Oh, you know, I researched at theological college. So they're crazy, they're dog pigs. God said, if you depart from the faith, you're a dog pig. You don't call someone Professor Dog Pig or you don't call them Mr. Dog Pig. That means you're crazy too. 
So the reason why you don't do well is because you look at a dog pig and you treat them as a person. You don't know who a man is. That's why you can't receive blessings because you haven't found your image. So because you don't know the fundamentals of creation, that's why you think this religion, that religion, that's why you're cursed. That's what it says here. So why aren't you doing well? You're the one doing the things that make you not do well. Your ancestors did that and you too are doing that and that's why you're saying you're not doing well. So I'll tell you even more practically. Let's find Exodus chapter 20. You know, this is really sad. You say, oh, help me with this problem. You know, help me to do well. Even though you, you say this, you don't do the things to do well. And so instead you had to retain God in your heart and you do the things of suicide. So God, before he gives you the death penalty, when you act like you're smarter and then you hang out with demons and you gossip. So what are you like? So when creation was made, the relationship between us and nature is that we have to become a man by finding God's image and to rule over it. That's what creation is. But because you don't know how to rule over it and then you're crazy about money, as soon as you store up a bit of money, then you're crazy about getting fame. And that's why you're all beasts that perish. That person, no matter how long their lives, will end up just witnessing that the Bible is correct. Why become someone so stupid? So, to become an instrument of, of evil, where you and your descendants go to hell, and you be an, a witness that the Bible verse is correct. Instead, let's be a witness that, that witnesses that the Bible is right as a son of God. That's why we're here. So God, the Father has told us the way to do well. But it's when we demons, they talk about whether, you know, someone has credentials or not. When, when did Jesus seek credentials? But it's these fakes. The more demons you have, that's when you seek credentials. But it's anyone. What does God say? The mystery of God, his image, so what's a fake church? If you don't have the mystery of God, forced at repentance, God's image, that's a fake church. So God calls that heresy. So what am I? So after God created all of creation, he said that he created us in his image and his likeness. His image is forced at repentance. It's when we find this image and we're able to rule over, that's when he gives us blessings. But because you're not able to rule over and you, you're crazy about money and you love money, God says that person has 10,000 evils. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. So why are you suffering? Why do you have disease? Why aren't you doing well? Why don't your children do well? Well, God, he's given us the diagnosis. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 and 5. So, let's read. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, Jehovah your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. Amen. So those people who aren't doing well, it's always about what can I do for me? What is my profit? So it's saying I will do well by my by my own means. One Timothy chapter six verse nine. That person continuously has um, trials. So that person is really filthy. So it's for themselves. So as soon as there's disadvantage, then. They're more filthy than a bear that has had its cubs taken away. They're so filthy. So in whatever in whatever meeting or gathering, if there's any disadvantage to them, 
that person that person is evil that person seeks freedom of religion if you serve anything other than god if you love anything more than god that is an idol and that's what they're doing so god is a jealous god so if you love anything more than god he will kill it he'll get rid of it so why are you doing this even though you're being told everything why why are you doing this so if you can't fix it let's read verse six but showing loving kindness to thousands to that to those who love me and keep my commandments amen so we have to only love god if you love god and keep his commandments which is to give up your heart and your life that person can genuinely love their neighbor so if you so if you've given up your heart and your life to God, if your heart is clean after doing four step repentance, then then the word will enter that heart so that person will know the chapter and verse. Because you're a demon, you kill yourself and your descendants. And because you don't keep the commandment and love your neighbor, you make your country cursed. Look at our country, those who bring curses upon our country. Because of their sin and their ancestors' sin, they have disease. And then they tell the, the other people to give them money to save them. That's our society. Is that the right thing? Is that loving your neighbor? No, that's tormenting them. Making other people pay more um, expenses for their, for their treatment. No, you, we need to tell them to repent. You know, these these religions that men have made, that isn't even truth. You know, why do those things? Because you do those things, how many dis generations do you kill? In verse 5 it says, three and four generations. Why don't you just kill yourself? Why do you have to go and kill three and four generations? And you call yourself uh, someone with a doctorate or a teacher. If you're eating up three and four generations and you give harm to others, how can that be a man? This is God's word. And you just go around so shameless. So who does it say to only love? Only love God. And you have to keep his commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, making other people pay for your medical expenses, is that loving them? What about you? If you love God, what happens to your gener your descendants? A thousand generations do well. Eternally, they do well. That's why we're here, to receive these blessings. So all we have to do is love God. So verse 4 and 5, let's read it again. Why is it that you're not doing well? Why is it that you're tormenting others? Verse 4 and 5. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, Jehovah your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. Amen. So what does it say here? Other than God, if it's for you, your flesh, and that's why Romans chapter 14, verse 6 to 8, there is nothing that belongs to me. It all belongs to the Lord. If God tells you to rule over, that's what you need to do. But you don't know how to rule over it and you serve it. That's why three and four generations are ruined. You ruin yourself and your descendants. So God asks, is that what you want to do? Or do you want to love God and receive blessings for a thousand generations? Let's read verse 6. But showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Amen. So God talks about two things. He says if you love him, so if you love him, then you will love your neighbor as yourself. You will keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandment, 
and you don't love your neighbor as yourself and you make denominations, then 100% you will go to hell. Romans chapter, oh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 19 verse 16. So a denomination 100% will go to hell. They don't have love, they have demons and they're of the flesh. So they will surely, Jude chapter 1 verse 19. And yet you make denominations and you say you love your neighbor. So if you go to place like if you go to places like that, you will go to hell. So God says it it won't work. You have to love God and you have to keep the commandments. But you don't love God. So your problems, your children's problems, health, not being at peace, not having joy. If all these things aren't doing well, that means your your descendants won't do well. Your children will, they're so annoyed saying, why don't I do well? What's the problem? It's because you haven't loved God. You've loved the world. So you've loved 10,000 things, which is money. So what is the problem? Have you loved God or not? If you have loved God, then you would have kept the commandment, which is to love your neighbor. So if our society is getting better, that means we love each other. That's God's commandment. So if you look in the world, where is it that is a wealthy country? It's where they respect people. You know, in our country, if you're a pilot, you just, you know, cut in line. But in America, it's... They're all equal and fair. Like, unless there's an emergency, no one cuts in line. Even policemen. You know, even policemen are, are they take their, they have to take their clothes off and they're, you know, um, inspected. So everything is fair. Everyone receives the same respect so if you've left the country then you have to be investigated so but which country uh, sorry which religion has the commandment so why do you seek freedom of religion if you love God and you keep his commandments then how many generations do well eternally this is the blessing we've come to receive isn't this amen so we have to become a country like that we have to become like this so what is loving God? Romans chapter 8 verse 28. So now we know what the problem is. Now God has told us how we and our children or our country can do well. Now we have to receive the key. So what is loving God? So if we love God, what do we first receive? Proverbs chapter 8 verse 21. Money. Why? Because 10,000 things are related to money. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. So why is it that God created all of creation and gave it to us? If you have a problem, well behind that problem is money. You know, you may you may talk, oh, you know, they 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 may say you someone may say my reputation's been ruined ruined. You give them money, it's over. You know, when a robber, when a robber has a gun, they don't want to take your life. They just want money. So everything, pretty much everything, is connected to money. But if you love God, He will fill up your storehouses with money. So He says, receive it from me. But if you try to earn it yourself, then you will die. You will kill your children. But if you love God and you take the money, then you can fill up your storehouses. So I'm a witness that has received this. I hope that you will receive this too. At this time, may you receive this. Isn't this amen? So if you love God, then a thousand generations will receive blessings. So if you and your children are doing well, will your country be ruined? No, it's because of those people that the country does well. But... But if you take the world's things and you please yourself, if you love the world's things,
things, then you don't have the love of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, you cannot love two things. If you don't love God, then three and four generations will die. So where there are people gathered like that, that country will be ruined. We need to realize. So it's all we have to do is love. So if you go to the bookstore and find out about love, you find out if there's any love that is the love of a man. It's all dog pig love. You know, the way their hearts, their thoughts are so, um, they're so unworthy. You know, I used to buy those books, but they're, you know, So, if you don't love God, then you love the world, and you love fame, and you love power. So what is the world? It's money. So because you're doing this, because you are a dog pig, he's given you these disasters and curses for you to realize. Let's become a man. So if you hear this sermon, your disease will be healed. If you hear this sermon, the demons in your family will be cast out. Straight away, this will happen. Straight away. So if you love God, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21, He will fill up your storehouses with money. It's not something you have to earn. He's put it in front of you. You just have to fill it up. So that's the way I live. And that's why I can confidently speak to you. So it's what's in front of you. Don't meddle about other people's. Just take what's in front of you. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. That's how we and our children have to do well. So when you do well, the country does well. So you have to become a blessed man. By the mystery of God, we have to find our image. That means wherever you go, you will do well because you rule over. This is the blessing we have to receive. So if you only love God, then a thousand generations do well. If you love God, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 21, your storehouses are filled with money. So if you want to receive this blessing, what is loving God? Romans 8 verse 28. Let's read it together. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So if you love God, you'll do well this way, you'll do well that way. This is the blessing you have to receive so that you and your descendants, a thousand generations, do well. So because of the nuclear weapons, the whole world is looking at Korea. You know, because of North Korea, the whole country, uh, the whole world is looking this way. So North Korea says, if America guarantees that they li leave the way that the country is run, then they'll get rid of the missiles. So, Korea has the mystery of God. So, when someone someone saying attention and salute. So, we will save the world. We will do more well. Isn't this our men? So, for a thousand generations to do well. That's why we're here, to receive these blessings. So, what is it that we have to do? We have to love. Let's say to the person next to us, let's only love God. Let's only love God. So, when we say let's love, we're all smiling. Why? Because God has created us in his image and his likeness. 
So what kind of love? Human love, there is no satisfaction. It's only when we have God's love that we have satisfaction. That's why there's no point watching those dramas where where, you know, the those you know, the boy and girl they love each other. Why do you watch that? Because you're the same. So we're created by God's love. But no matter no matter how much you meet some man or woman, that person isn't God. So, you know, don't curse those people because you're so crazy about not receiving God's love. That's why you just grab anyone. So don't curse them. It's because they don't have God's love. If you have God's love, starting from money, you receive money and your desires are fulfilled and your children, 10,000 generations, do well. That's why we're here to receive this. Isn't this our men? So in our country, they send the husbands to Saudi Arabia and then they tell their husbands, just, just you know, send the money. You don't have to come home. Just, you know, s send the money online. And, and has Korea become happy because of that? No, there's more divorce. So after you have some food, then you want to get a horse. When you get a horse, then you want a servant. So you keep wanting something else. When you become full, you think that that's the end, but you end up wanting more. You end up having more grumblings. So... So my so my image finding finding God's image which is forced air repentance that's when we're satisfied so Romans chapter 8 verse 28 whether you do this or whether you do, do that there is no disadvantage that this is the blessing we've come to receive isn't this amen this way or that way, there is no disadvantage. Let's read it again. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So this way or that way, that way or this. So someone about two years ago said, Pastor, what will happen? And I said, there's no disadvantage. If those who don't love God, even in their own bedrooms, they'll die. That's disadvantage. But if you love God, there's no disadvantage this way or that way. So there's n nothing that you have to worry about. There is never disadvantage. This is the blessing we've come to receive. So if you haven't done well today, let's change it to where it doesn't matter if you do this way or that way, there's no disadvantage. So if we love God, so how is it that we love God? Someone who is called, called according to his purpose, that is forced at repentance. So Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. So if you just do forced at repentance, as much as you force step repentance, as much as you love God, there is no disadvantage. So why is it that you don't do it and you kill yourself and your children? If you love God, there is no disadvantage. So how do we love? It's the mystery of God, four step repentance. So if you love God, a thousand generations do well. 10,000 problems, money problems are uh, solved. So who hinders this? Those who are to be ruined, those with demons. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. So who are those with demons? It's these denominations, these pastors, these theologians. It's these demons who are to be ruined. So who is it that blocks you doing well? So is it just them? It's the ancestors' demons inside of you. 
John chapter 8 verse 44. So, who is it that ruins you? It's your ancestors' demons, it's other demons that are like with like, and that's why demons, they listen to demons. If you depart from the faith, you listen to demons. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. So what is loving God? It's four-step repentance. So Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Amen. So if you love God, what is love? This mystery of God, Christ, the mystery of Christ, four-step repentance, by this, he wants us to live a Christian life. He wants to be sons of God. He wants us to come to Christ. So this calling, four-step repentance, as much as you do it, you love God. So as much as you receive grace, you love God. So those people who don't even know the mystery of God, who do, don't do four-step repentance, they lie and say they've received grace. If you want to receive the grace of Christ, you have to go inside of Christ and be and have no denominations. You have to become one. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. So you make denominations and then you lie. And then you say that you love God. What is loving? It's to go inside of Christ and by four-step repentance to become a new man, a blessed man, and to go to a God and meet him. That is love. So he says, come all those with heavy who are heavy laden with burdens but if you don't do four step repentance how can you entrust your burdens how can you have peace you're a demon you know you're lying you don't even have a dress in the bible and you're scorning god's word this word is god john chapter 1 verse 1 why are you suffering because you don't love god but the things of the world you know, you say, I've got money or I've got some support. You know, you're wanting death. You, your three and four generations will be cut off. What suffering do you have? What is it that you haven't done according to this word? You haven't loved God. And that's why 10,000 things, which is money, isn't being released. So how can you expect to do well? So if you don't receive this blessing, then you'll receive disasters. You'll go to hell. You'll kill your children. And you'll cut off the, your family line. And then you say that you're not doing well. So today, you need to diagnose what is wrong. We need to love God, which is four-step repentance. How much haven't you done four-step repentance? That you're a demon and you can't say amen. So if you can't deceive men, how can you deceive God? So if you can't say amen, you haven't loved God. And that's why you're a dog pig. That's why three and four generations won't do well. So it's you that's made it like that. Why are you saying other things? If you love God, he will give you everything. That there is no disadvantage. So God's word, even if I'm in Sodom and Gomorrah, if I have the right relationship with God, he will drag me out of there. There is no disadvantage. Today we've come to receive this blessing. Even if everything is ruined, there is no disadvantage for me and my children. This is the blessing we've come to receive. So, these miraculous blessings, to change them to disasters, to kill yourself and your children. How can you so shamelessly sleep? So how can you be different to the dog pigs at your home? Before... You love your neighbor. If you've loved yourself and your children, as much as you do forced their repentance, you love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Don't have this blessing taken away from you. So all you have to do is love. All you have to do is repent and it will give to you. you to the point where you say amen. Where you say that you're a son of God. Then there is no disadvantage. Isn't this amen? So he says he'll start by giving you money that he will sell. 10,000 things that, that, 
that there will be no disadvantage to a thousand generations. So why do you choose to be ruined and to have disadvantage? So if I just watch that, am I someone who's keeping the commandment, which is to love my neighbor? Is that a true pastor? Even if I say you need to poke your eyes out, Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 to 30. God says, pluck it out your eyes to go to heaven. Cut off your arms so you can go to heaven. These are God's words, not mine. But fakes, because they don't say correct words, because you've listened to these fake sermons, you, you're like, oh, why are you saying to pluck out my eyes? It's not me who said that, it's God. But those people who go to fake churches, they say, I heard that only for the first time. That's why you're fake. You know, God, how much does he love us to say, pluck out your eyes to go to heaven you know does god truly pluck out our eyes no if you don't have eyes he wants he you know replaces them with new ones so romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that god causes all things to work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose amen so is there anything missing here or is it all things so all things is there any disadvantage so why do you love other things not God so it's because you've loved something of the world you know worldly demons they love money the most but that's the worst so if you have money what do you want after that you look on the news if you have a bit of money you want fame so if you love money, money or fame or worldly things, then you cannot escape from the way of a beast. That person is pitiful. Why are you suffering in that way? Today, let's end that. Let's say with our mouths, I will only love God. So you're, you may think, when have I loved God? Well, let's say, now let's do forced repentance to the point of giving up our lives that's why he tells us to give up our lives so we have to give up our lives for four step repentance so there is no disadvantage so we and our children will fix our destiny we will do well Korea will do well let's not seek freedom of religion don't be mistaken to thinking these de these religions that that men have made they're not religions this is truth that never changes if you're suffering from disease, that means you've tormented God a lot. The money that you have, until you become a beggar and lose all that money, you will suffer. So let's love God. And let's receive money blessings. Let's receive healing for our disease. Do you want to pass that disease via heredity to your children? No, today let's end this by loving God. Let's end this all. Let's end these disasters and curses and only receive blessings. Let's call upon the Lord three times. And by forced yet repentance, let's make this promised blessing mine, my children's, to make Korea do well so that the whole world will come this way. Let's call upon the Lord three times. As much as we love God, He will give to us. There is no disadvantage. Let's say again, I have no disadvantage. So if you don't have disadvantage, you'll do more well. Let's say, I will do more well. So what method will you find? If we only love God, is there disadvantage or not? Is there disadvantage for my descendants or not? You know, people say, oh, let's love the environment and pass it down to our children. If you love the environment you'll be real you'll be ruined we have to love god and rule over the environment let's call upon the lord three times lord 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 father god father god we thank you father god we thank you help us to only love god by the mystery of God, four-step repentance, may we only love God. <laughs>